This is the story of Michael Blake, former paratrooper, one of the many ex-GIs who have found themselves drawn back to those places they had known during the war, seeking the old thrill of excitement, but never finding it. But Blake's was a strange story, different from most. Maybe you've heard it. Well, the end of it anyway. It hit the headlines at the time. That bewildering end up here at the village of saint Elzear in the rugged mountains of the south of France. The summer dawn comes quietly to the village perched here on the edge of the precipice. Father Goron, the village priest, always the first awake, was on his way to the church when suddenly the bells were ringing. The bells that had been silent ever since the disappearance of the gauntlet of St. Elzear, the famous green glove which had made this village an object of pilgrimage to the sick, the maimed, and the faithful for nearly a thousand years. To Father Goron, it meant that the gauntlet had come home, for the vow had been made that the bell should never ring again until it returned. But it wasn't there in the niche which had been empty so long. Why then did the bells ring? And who was ringing them? It, father. Nobody. There was nobody there. Only the dead man. Who is he? Did he ring the bell to say the gauntlet had come home? He was dead as it rang. Nobody was up there. Los Angeles, California, an American. So there it was. The miracle of the gauntlet that had come home with no one to bring it. Of the bell that rang with no man alive to pull the rope. And of course, the mystery of the dead man. That was the end of the story. But this story had really begun many years earlier. August, 1944. The Allied liberation of the south of France. One survivor reached the ground behind the German lines. Newspaper correspondent. 
and over the papers. Battle scenes, impressions. My name's Paul Rona. I see yours is Blake, Lieutenant Blake. How come a German speaks such good English? Who said I was German? No, what are you? I've changed passports so often, I've lost touch. I was educated in England. My mother was a Czech, my father was a Pole. In those days, the Poles were Russians, the Czechs were Austrians. So you work it out. The Americans are wasting an awful lot of ammunition. You need every shell you can get when the German 19th Army counterattacks at dawn. They're going to be pushed to the sea. Oh, yeah? Okay, you tell that to intelligence. Come on, let's go. Come on, I said, let's go. Determined, aren't you? You mind if I take this? Open it. I told you I sketched. Now, wait a minute. What else you got in there? Huh. It's a green glove. Something very valuable. Listen, Blake. If you let me go, it's yours. It's worth enough to make you rich for the rest of your life. Huh? Look at those gems. I told you I sketched. That's merely a sideline. In peacetime, I'm an art dealer. Antiques. I have a shop in London, Paris, even New York. You've probably heard of it. Rona's, close to Tiffany's. Never been there. Blake. Like this glove's worth a fortune for the old collector would be there. Come on, let's go. So you drop from the plane. Don't worry. The underground has helped many others before you. There's a German here. Where is he? Nobody here, monsieur. I guess a shell must have got him. Hurry, please, hurry. Wait a minute. Germans are counterattacking. 19th Army. I gotta get a message through. A messenger will leave at once. You promise? I promise. Of course. Let others worry now. Pierre, help him. First, we drink to Robert. Now, I know you're as happy as we are. To Robert. The American, madame. Oh, it is bad to leave your bed, monsieur. You send the message like you promised. He does not know. The attack will not come. What do you mean it won't come? It's coming right now. No, no. Not now or ever. The Germans are retreating. That's why we drink. Those are American guns. Pierre, champagne for monsieur. We drink. Yes, we drink to you. Our first American since the war came. And we drink to the English. And to the French. And to Robert. My husband. Listen to the music. Robert's favorite tune. It is sad but gay too. We would play together, he and I. It was before the war. It is catchy, is it not? You remember, Doctor, this tune which Robert loved so well. What is it? No! We found him. He had met a German patrol. He was supposed to be in bed. He could still speak when we found him. He said he promised an American that the message would go through the lines. He's dead. <laughs> Thought he was
was doing something for his country. If he died for nothing. That man swore the Germans would attack. And you see, I... Words cannot help me. Yeah, I know. Are you ready, monsieur? She has not spoken since. Her reason is quite gone. Well, let's go. Oh, you... You're forgetting your bag, monsieur. Well, you found it? Yes, in the ruins. Oh, the road is hard. It will be better to carry nothing. Then I'll keep it for you. Someday you can come back for it after the war. Yes, Pierre, you keep it. Thanks. That was the end of the beginning. They took to the woods. And the story stopped dead for several years. It started again one fine August morning in Paris. The years had been tough for Michael Blake. Everything had gone wrong. So Michael came back. For somewhere in the south of France, he knew of a glove which was worth a fortune. But someone had been waiting for Michael Blake's return. The platform on which we're now standing is 188 feet above the ground. The total height of the structure is 975 feet. And now if you'll continue with me to the northeast parapet over there, you'll be able to get a good look at the Seine and all the bridges below us. This way. Look over your shoulder and tell me what the little man in the gray suit's doing. Please. You coming this way? Yes. Yes. Now, look, I'm going to catch that elevator. If he tries to follow me, stop him. Ask him the time. Anything to delay him. Who are you? Thanks. Oh, please, please, can you tell me the time? Oh, it's... Ten minutes to twelve. Oh, I'm sorry I made you miss your elevator. There, but you can walk down. Excuse me, please. I'm very sorry. By now, of course, you've all seen the River Seine, which flows through Paris. If you look to your left, you'll find the famous monument, the Arc de Triomphe. with you is, Jimmy, you don't drink enough. I ought to take liquor seriously or not take it at all. For one another night, Captain. You had four already. I'm getting a taste for it. Bring another scotch, Smitty. Anything you say? Oh, Jimmy. Uh, bourbon and water. Bourbon and water. Chuck. My old buddy, Chuck. Mike. Yeah, that's right. Mike, you've heard me talk of Mike. Ohio State together. Mike, this is Chris, Chris Kennedy. Chris Kennedy did me a big favor today. Well, you know each other, huh? Uh, bourbon and water, that's uh, 350. And uh, Mike, you didn't finish your drink. Nice music, isn't it? Take it easy. Hello? Hello? Why are you in such a 
hurry to go away. Oh, you'd probably ask a lot of questions I wouldn't want to answer. <laughs> You're so right. What was it all about this morning? Why was that man following you? I don't know. What are you doing tomorrow? Hmm? I'm showing tourists the sights of Paris. Oh, I'm a stranger in town. How about giving me a guided tour? <laughs> official or unofficial? Unofficial. Well, first you'd have to tell me a little more about the man who was following you. Nothing more to tell you. You know something? I don't believe you. All right, look, I haven't robbed a bank, I haven't killed anybody, and I'm not an international spy. You believe that? I'll try. Hmm. You dance beautiful. Now it's got me into more trouble. He went home while he still knew where. That is, if he knew where. He said for his friend, uh, Mike, to look after you, Chris. Oh, thanks, Millie. Thanks. Mm. <laughs> when we grow old, I'll get you a guitar player. He'll play for us all the time. We? Mm -hmm. Is that a firm offer? Hey, you know, I always make these rash promises about two in the morning. Never in front of witnesses, though. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever tell you you weren't bad looking? Why aren't you married and done for? Why aren't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just one of those things? Yeah, that's great. Maybe I can see you every night for a week, maybe. Hmm? Maybe. <laughs> of course, you're going to have to come to Monte Carlo. You're going to Monte Carlo? Yeah, six o'clock train tomorrow night. Well, I think it's pretty rude of you to toy with my affections like that and then well, leave me. Come with me. There's your nightclub. That's how I met your friend Jimmy. I was in buying a ticket. What do you mean? You went to Ohio State together. <laughs> I didn't go to college. Well. That's right. Kind of looks like we spent the night together under false pretenses. <laughs> Thanks for saving my life. Michael Blake? Yeah? This porter from your hotel said you might come here. Yeah, what about it? Will you please return with us to your hotel? Why? What is all this? I'm Inspector Fobe of the Paris Police Department. I desire information regarding the man who lies dead in your room. Please. Why do you recall having seen him? For the life of me, I can't remember. For the life of you, perhaps you had better remember. And what is Mademoiselle's knowledge of this matter? Have you seen this dead person before? Once. Also on the Eiffel Tower? Yes, that's where I saw him. I don't remember why I noticed him either. That is definite, Mademoiselle? Yes. You know that to lie on behalf of a criminal is to render yourself an accessory. Look, don't call me a criminal. Why should she lie? Perhaps your hearing's faulty. I didn't say she lied. So neither of you can recall why you noticed this man. It was chance. Or a psychic urge which drew the three of you together. <laughs> the doctor says he's been dead from two to six hours. May I ask you where you were during that time? A little cabaret down the street. I don't know. It was a place called a sleeping cat or something. Before that? I was here. It is well you spoke the truth. There are witnesses to prove that. What are you doing in France, monsieur? Spending my money. 
You got any objection? None, if that is the reason for your visit. Look, all right. I came here... I came here to kill a guy. I left his body in my bedroom for the maid to find. Go on, arrest me. I cannot arrest you without further proof. But you will be transferred to another room. One of my men will be on hand. We'll call it uh, protective custody. Yes, well, that's very generous of you. You see, there are three elements in your favor. First and strongest, of course, is uh, this young lady's statement, substantiating her own. Second, you stayed out tonight instead of disposing of the deceased while it might have been possible. Third, you seem to be a reasonably intelligent person. If you'd killed this man, I believe he would have destroyed his drawing. It was at the dead man's pocket. I believed you, monsieur, when you failed to identify him because it's obvious he needed a means to identify you. But uh, it also indicates that there is somewhere a link or a connection between your presence in France and his death. Order of you, is it not? Lieutenant of United States Airborne Infantry. Your coffee, monsieur. Hey, you've only got one there. What about one for my friend outside? Monsieur? My watchdog, the policeman who's wearing the carpet out. There is no policeman, monsieur. Oh, yes, there is. Hey, you're right, he's gone. Is that all, monsieur? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks. Yeah, monsieur? In the police department, please. Inspector Faubert. Who is calling? This is Mr. Blake. This is Inspector Faubert's secretary. I'm sorry, but the inspector will be away from Paris for five days. Hey, wait a minute. You think I'm going to hang around here for five days waiting for him to come back? I regret, monsieur, but if you will telephone next week... Next week? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will. Anytime after Tuesday. Au revoir. Au revoir. I know. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me also, monsieur. Pardon me.
Oh. What did it say? Uh, no smoke. Uh, I speak not the English much. Uh, not much you don't. You spoke it when you bumped into me this morning. Who hired you to follow me? Follow, monsieur? Yeah. You're the little guy that was killed. Do you have the same boss? Uh, for me, you talk too quick. I go to Saint Denis. I do not know you. Well, let's keep it that way, huh? You go to Saint Denis, I go to Calais. Calais? That's right. I'm going on to England. You tell that to your boss, too. Oh, I know Calais. The mother of my wife, she have an hotel there. An English name, the Hotel Strand. But being an American, you would not know. Perhaps you are not. But if you would wish to stay at the hotel of the mother of my wife... I'll get out of here. Have a nice trip. Au revoir, monsieur. <laughs> Where's your baggage? I'm traveling light. Of course, I forgot. I forgot what? But to have a light. Your seat is opposite to madame. It was madame who said you would be traveling light. Oh, what are you doing here? Huh? Please get off. You're going to get us both in trouble. Well, it's very nice of you to come down to see me off, Chris, but the train's about Listen, to leave. Listen to me. I went to your hotel room. I found you know to phobia. Oh, I mean, you shouldn't read other people's mail. This is crazy. He told you not to leave. Well, he left. I don't believe it. Yeah, and the watchdog outside my bedroom door. He left, too. Michael, don't joke. <laughs> and don't go away and leave me with all this whatever it is without telling me anything. I'm frightened. Well, there's nothing to be frightened about. And there's nothing to tell you. Now, why don't you go back to your hotel and well, just I try went to... back to my room last night. Somebody had already broken in and, and it torn things all apart. Uh, excuse me, uh, do you speak English? No, monsieur. <laughs> yeah. Who could have done that? That's what I'm asking you. You got me into all of this. I was leading a nice, quiet, safe life until you came along. It was dull, but quiet and safe. Look, I'm sorry. I, I don't know who it was who messed up your room, and I don't know who the little guy was who ended up on his face in my bedroom. You don't know anything. Holding just one big I... mystery to you. Bodies all over the place. Uh, drawings of his in the pocket of a dead man. Now listen. You don't even know where the drawing came from, I suppose. Excuse me, ma'am. Ticket, please. Madam hasn't got a ticket. Doesn't got a ticket? No, no ticket. But it's necessary to have a ticket. It's forbidden to board a train to travel without being the holder of a ticket to a destination. Madam isn't going any place. I am if you are. I'm uh, not without a ticket. And the fare is 5,799 francs. Look, so madam's getting late. off the train right now. Now, this is too late. And no ticket. Where's the emergency cord on this thing? If you put that cord, your face is a fine of 5,000 francs. And imprisonment, it states here. Uh, according to regulation. Okay. 5,700 francs. Uh, and 99 francs. 99 francs. That's 10,000 yes, there. You. you keep the change. Oh, thank you, monsieur. I I'll buy some new glasses yes, with it. You do. Thank you very much. I I'll buy two tickets immediately. That's fine. How can such a little dame be such a big nuisance? What really happened to that policeman who was guarding Look, he went out on a date or something. I don't know. Oh, that's ridiculous. Would... All right, so I killed him, too. <laughs> You think she understood? No, we're just keeping her awake. Did they see your ticket, sir? The police walked out on me. But you can't run away like this. They'll catch up with you anyhow within two days. In two days and two days, I'll be out of France. Out of France? Yeah. What is this? Anyhow, listen, I'll tell you what it is. It's none of your business now. I don't want any more of your help, Chris. I'm not offering my help. Hasn't it crossed your mind that I'm in this too as deep as you are? Oh, no. If you get away, I'll be in jail. <laughs> get this. I'm going to stick by you until I know what this is all about. In self-defense, I'll do it. Believe me, I'll be with you day and night. Oh, who's complaining? Michael. Call me Mike. You're the most arrogantly stupid. 
Eh, l'amour. Toujours l'amour. You were supposed to get off last night. Never stop. mind that. Did you kill that man? Kill what? what Don't what hedge. Is... Tell me. What? I didn't kill any man, Chris. Now, what is all the this The police about? are on the train. Police? Yes. There's one just two compartments away. The man that I saw with Phobar after he left you last night. You didn't escape. They let you get away to see where you'd end up. I'll go past his window. You hop out along the corridor the other way. You gonna help me? Oh, we'll both end up in jail if I don't. Look, if he doesn't follow me, then I'll meet you at the warehouse in front of the station. Good luck, Mike. Hey, you call me Mike. Don't let it go to your head. That detective must have lost his touch. You think he went to sleep? Right now, I'm not thinking. Chris, thanks for... Uh, it's all part of our service. Save your breath for walking. Hey, there's a little cafe. Think we can risk some coffee? No, but we will. Well, prisoner ate a hearty breakfast. Both prisoners. Well, where do we go from here? You might as well tell me. I'll be around to find out. All right, I'll tell you. I'm going to try to find a, an old ruined farmhouse near a chateau. It's on a field that's shaped like a boomerang. At least it looks like a boomerang from the air. You were flying? Mm hmm Well, I had to bail out. It was a war, remember? Do you want to go back and find the ruins? Why? Do you think you'll find the real killer there? I'm not looking for the killer. You're not? No. You want to call the police? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. But somebody knows why you were followed in Paris, why that man was killed. And I've got a hunch you can guess who's behind it. Mm -hmm. I thought the guy was dead. What guy? Who? Phony count that talked too much. Kind of an art dealer. At least he said he was an art dealer. Good morning, Mr. Paul. Here it is. Huh? Ah. Mm -hmm. Exquisite. The American left Paris at six o'clock last night. Pepe's on the train, too. It arrives here in Monte Carlo at 11. Hello, darling. Kirby! Good morning, dear sir. My dear. Good morning. Paul. Uh, we'll buy the picture. You make the deal. Bye. Paul. Paul, I just met Nina Howard. Why aren't we joining your party tonight? You know Mr. Perrin would be there. I have business, Kirby. But his party is business to me. If I'm to get into one of his new plays... Ah, but my business could be worth more than $100,000. But... Tax-free. Well, that's different. <laughs> I promise you'll meet Mr. Perrin before he goes. You're wonderful, Paul. Shall we go? Yes. Uh, you still want me to take you to Nice? No, I've changed my mind. I want to see St. Elzear. Who is St. Elzear? He's a saint. A saint? Well, he's also a place. But where? About 20 miles in distance, a thousand years in habit and thought. Yes, I don't understand. <laughs> of course you don't. It's 20 miles.
That's the village up there. Are we going to that old place? <laughs> Come over here. This is a very famous spot in local legend. It's called the Sharp Point. Because it's sharp, as you can see. And this is where Sir Elvia won his battle over the Moors. I thought you said he is a saint. Oh, he is. A very fiery one. But this is way in the past. You see, the Moors were attacking way up that road. It's the only road connecting the village with the outside world. But an Elzia attacked the Moors from the rear. He led his men down to this spot by the only other route, an almost impossible goat track. Well, that was the end of the Moors. You can see the goat track over there. It starts from the village, clings to the precipice, and takes a very dangerous course down the face of the cliff. You can see the track clearly as it reaches the valley and zigzags across rough country to a point directly below us. Then it climbs again, very steeply, up, up, up to this point. What's up at this village anyway? It's not what is there now. It's what was there once. Way in the past? Well, in the past. Is that his portrait? Yes, with his sword and his gauntlet. What was that? Well, oh, that's where the gauntlet used to be before it was stolen. Good morning, Father. Can I be of help to you? Oh, good morning, Father. Good morning. Your shrine is very beautiful. It is very quiet now. Of course, it was not always so. People used to come here in their thousands. In the time of the gauntlet? Oh, you know about the gauntlet. It used to be over there, didn't it? Night and day. Now, who could imagine that it would not be safe there? But you can't imagine what's gone since the war. Pictures, priceless objects have changed hands. Things the world still believes to be lost. I know a New York collector will pay 12 million francs for a stolen Cellini vase. For the gauntlet, that same collector would pay upwards of $100,000. $100,000? dollars So you see, Father, perhaps it's done quite a bit of traveling. Or perhaps it will. I believe that one day it will come home. And then you will ring the bell. Oh, you know about the bell, too. The bell that has never rung since the day the gauntlet was stolen will never ring again until it comes back. Yes, I read that somewhere. Well, thank you, Father. Goodbye, darling. Just call me later. Yes. Inspector Fulbert, one doesn't expect to see you in Monte Carlo. I flew in this morning. I suppose even a policeman can combine business with pleasure. Business? Rather serious business. But I expect we shall meet at the casino. With pleasure. Telegram arrived for you from Pepe. I decoded it. Madame, this is the 14th road we've driven up since the moon. Now, I am an understanding man. But my wife, who prepares my supper, is not so understanding. I know, I know. But I have a feeling this road is different. Madame.
There it is. It's the only thing left she loved. Well, don't you see, Chris? I'm nothing but bad luck. This proves it. Oh, no, Mike. You're not to blame because the place was destroyed by the war. All right, why come back if you weren't ready to face things? I was. There's nothing left to face. You know, when I walked out of that door years ago, things... Well, they went from bad to worse. I thought that, well, maybe if I came back and found a glove, it might help. I don't know, it might, might help all of us. Bad luck better pay off sometime. Don't go. I'd like a little chat. I did a sketch of you from memory. Rather good. We've met before. Count Paul Rona. Polish title. Come on. Just to clarify matters, I've been keeping a tab on you since the war through my New York office. I must say you've had a difficult time. Why was that man killed in Michael's room? Ah, uh, yes, I did read about that in the papers. Conrad Verno, the man who was beaten to death. I imagined he knew what you'd come for and decided to double-cross somebody. What I'd come for? Perhaps he might have to make a deal behind somebody's back. So you killed him? My dear young lady, I've never killed anyone in my life. Not even during the war. The Germans looked upon me as a valued collaborateur, whereas the French regarded me as one of their spies. It's a convenient arrangement. Well, that's beside the point. You're broke. That's why you've gone to France to cash in on the glove. So it's still here. Where? It might be wiser to tell me, Blake. You hear me? Don't touch him. Not yet. It was silly, Blake. But it isn't the first time blood's been shed for the gauntlet of St. Elsia. What? The green glove. It's the same thing. Yeah, you won't get far without my help. Your help? A warrant has been issued for your arrest. And Miss Kenneth for murder. They really believe I killed that guy in Paris. And the detective on the train. He was shot dead as you left your coach. A piece of stupidity to the part What's of someone. The police never forget the murder of one of themselves. However, they think you did it, Blake. So it's you they're after. You framed yourself. Opportunity, motive, flight. Another surprise. Inspector Fulbert's waiting for you in Monte Carlo now. But don't worry. I'll get you out of France. I'll pay you $5,000 for the glove. Come here. This is Pepe. You want in boxing circles of the crab. A rough customer. Get out of my way. No. Thank you. 
think I heard the American. The girl to get him. Get two men, go around to the bank. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but you're, what is it? They are here, eh? I did right, Fred, you know. Yes, yes, you were quite right to come first. lying in the ruins. Then he's halfway down away. Oh, yes. Oh. A half yard more, and you could as well be a fish. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Pierre? <laughs> held her, ran away when I saw Pierre and me. <sighs> Foolish was it not to run from a man who is old and a woman who is man. Oh, bring him to the village. An empty village. No more than 50 people. Including the cat. Child, it is to burn for that. No. I wait here till my son comes. Your son? Yes. He went to take a message through the German lines. Oh. He should be back immediately. We must get water for your face. Time has stopped for her, monsieur. She believes her son Armand still lives. We must get out of here. No. No. You said you were ready to face things. Yeah, I know, but she doesn't even know what's happened. What will be quick, and our mom must come soon. Surely but two. Oh, he will be shocked to see the bruises on your face. That is Amo. Didn't I tell you he would come? Over there. Over there. Quick. Pardon for disturbing you, madame, but we saw the light. We search for a man who is wanted for murder. May we know who is here? Here? Yes, it is Pierre, my concierge. And madam, nobody else. Very well, but it's late for you to be out of your bed. Good night, madam. Monsieur? Good night. Talked of a man who was wanted for murder. You've heard? Yeah, I heard. Listen, I didn't murder anybody. The police are leaving. Yeah, well, I guess we might as well be going too, huh? You show us the way? Mm -hmm. Monsieur, are you not forgetting something? That little bag you left. Bag? Yes. Pierre entered the burning chateau to save it for you. I promised I would keep it. Thanks. You might as well give it to me then. Huh? What is it in there, monsieur? It must be very valuable for you to have come so far. Nothing. Harmon would like to know. He's interested in so many subjects. I think she has a right to see it, Mike. I think you owe it to her. Well, there's nothing in it but a, a lot of drawings and an old green glove. Tell us about saint Elzia, Pierre. saint Elzia? Oh, it's a mountain village behind Monte Carlo, very small. Oh, it's famous, of course, for the gauntlet, which was said to heal the sick. And... The gauntlet of saint Elzear. Is it... Is it possible? The gauntlet? 
Oh, Saint Elzian. Look at her, Mike. I'm so weak once before. When I went to the old church with Alma. <laughs> the pilgrims would come in their thousands to touch the gauntlet. Just to touch it. <laughs> Here when Amor died. But now I know he will never go. Ever be. <laughs> We should have taken the road. I right, run into the police. Until we figure something out, we haven't got a leg to stand on. Well, right now, I haven't got a leg to walk on. I'm kind of tired, huh? Oh, tired. If I hike 10 miles in the high heels, try it sometime. Yeah, look at those clouds over there. It's going to rain any minute. Come on, let's go. Where to? Marseille? Paris? The police are sure to catch up with us someday. Maybe they won't. Miracles can happen, you know. Oh, miracles. But you know, I almost believe in miracles. When she touched that glove, something strange happened. Look, she just fainted and she hit her head. That's all, Chris. You think she'll ever stop crying again? I'm not thinking anymore. Did you know before what the glove meant? You shouldn't have come back just because you thought it would pay off. You know, Mike, three nights ago I was in love with you. I even wanted to marry. But I wouldn't now. Not the way you are. I didn't know I'd asked you. Yes, Mama. We will fetch your dry clothes from the car. Oh, uh, we have no car, ma'am. Well, we were hiking San Rafael. We thought maybe we could get a bus from here. Yes. But there's no bus till morning. But we have a room, and we can dry your clothes while you sleep. <laughs> it's a warm bed. <laughs> Recommended. She thinks we're married. All right, we are. Yes, we're Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Why? Because, because of the police, because of them. The register, monsieur. Uh, uh, yes. <clears throat> well, would you like to sign for us, darling? Mike. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, just write it. No, no, you. It's ridiculous. A uh, robe for madame. And my robe for monsieur. Well, if you will both come to your room and take off all of your wet clothes. Uh, uh, my wife uh, is a little bit shy. <laughs> yes, you see, we just got married today. Today? Oh. <laughs> oh, I understand. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Give him a brandy. Yes, Mama. So he won't catch cold. You can change in the kitchen. Come. Yes. I'll see you later, Mama. Mama. 
Here we are. Is it that Monsieur and Madame spend their honeymoon walking? Yes. <laughs> it's original, isn't it? <laughs> we thought only the English did such things. <laughs> uh, we'll both be so comfortable here. And we'll serve dinner by the fire with our best wine to warm the cockles of your heart. They won't need warming. <laughs> I'm sure of that. And my husband will dine downstairs. But Charles, you're uneasy. Oh, but you'll get used to it. You'll need another pillow. One will be enough. <laughs> I'll give the key to your husband. Oh, no! I'll keep it, thank you. <laughs> Another brandy, monsieur? Why? It's good for lining the stomach. Well, my stomach is very well lined already. And it'll keep your spirits up. Well, what's the matter? Do I look depressed? Oh, on your wedding night, monsieur? No. There you are. By the way, my wife said the bride has gone to bed. Is that a fact? Yes. No, she didn't even kiss her husband goodnight. Oh, Chuck, old friend. <laughs> How goes it? But it was said you drove into St. Maxine. I came back, a night for ducks. A road like a river, but it improves. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> a brandy and make it large. A brandy, Alphonse Weich. Have mine. It's nothing like brandy to do. Lift up the spirit. <laughs> Thank you, monsieur. Ah, Alphonse, there's something I wanted to tell you. Madame Berto asked for you tonight. <laughs> you know that widow, she views you with an amiable eye. She's too thin, but friendly. And her bouillabaisse mm, was a gourmet's dream. I tell you, Alphonse, if I were in your shoes then... Oh. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <sighs> Just like you. On our wedding night. You're sleeping in here. There's a chair. Look at that, right smack in the middle of the front page. Hey, and that gorgeous brunette is named Christy McKenna. You're drunk. Oh, I'm drunk. Oh, what are we going to do? I'm going to take a bus out of here tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. You are? Yes, I'm going to burn this. You'll be safe oh, enough here. Well, you get away with a glove. Oh, oh, where is it? Where is it? Don't wake everybody. I only came here to say goodbye. You made that quite obvious. Goodbye. Goodbye to my, my wife. Say, you know something? I'd like you to be my wife. Look, Mike, will you, will you go in the other room? Take the bag with you. I don't want it. You'll want what it'll bring when you've skipped the country. I'm not skipping the country. Then why leave me here until you're safe? Until you're safe. Don't you see I'm leaving the bag with you? I don't need it where I'm going. Where are you going? To Monte Carlo to make a deal. Will that count? With Faubert. He can have me, but he's got to leave you alone. You're crazy. I'm drunk. And that's not, that's not quite the same thing. Mike. Huh? Come back. If you've got anything to say to me, you will come to me and say it. Do you mind if I kiss you? What? Don't say I have to ask twice. <laughs> I can't breathe. Mike, 
sit down. Hmm? Now, let's try and talk some sense. What'd you do that for? You wanted to help me? I will. Oh, I... Mike, no, not your way. You can't confess to murders you haven't done. I gotta prove it first. Well, I'm not so sure they can't. That's why we've got to think of a way out before we get in any deeper. I can't think anymore. You will. After you've had some sleep. Yeah. Where are you going? Downstairs. I'll add to that bottle again. You are not. Oh, please. The door's locked, Mike. Can't get out. You know, this is the first time in my life that a woman's locked me inside her apartment. Life is full of surprises. Mm -hmm. Get some sleep. There. I can handle Fogar myself. Oh, no, I don't mean that. We should try to avoid him. Until we think of some way of pitting the guilt on the guilty one. We could get a bus to me, split up, and meet again in Monte Carlo. How does that sound? It's fine. Good night. There's another one that comes in half an hour. You take that one. All right. And you remember the name of the hotel I told you in Monte Carlo, the both side? We both take rooms on the second floor balcony, then we can contact each other after dark. Now, what do you have a guidebook for? I was reading about San Elvia. What does it say? Mainly about the legend of the Gordon. Here's your bus. Now, look, honey. Uh, yeah, why don't you get yourself a new dress? Hmm? <laughs> kind of messy, huh? Kind of fix up your hair a bit. All right. Chris, think of me, huh? And I keep your fingers crossed. And don't forget your name's still Smith. garage at Latourby. Yeah, it's a little town above you on the mountain. Well, when are you coming here? I want you to do something for me, Chris, but it's got to be fast. I'm taking the glove back to St. Elziar now. You what? I want you to trick the Count into following me. Oh, Mike, how can I? I've checked everything. The Count will be at the cabaret of the casino at two tonight. I want you to go there, Chris. Attract his attention. Keep him interested. Talk to him until three o'clock. Why three? Well, that's the most important part. At 3 o'clock. Now, listen very carefully, Chris. At 3 o'clock, tell him where I'm going. Well, but, but, but Mike, he'll come after you right away. Well, yeah, that's the idea. Then you call Inspector Fulbert. Tell him to have his men up at the village at 5 o'clock on the nose. The road to St. Elziar's a dead end. We'll have the Count and his boys right in the middle with the glove in their hands. What if the police are late? They mustn't be. You got it? I think so. Cabaret of the casino. Tell the Count at 3 o'clock. Have the police up there at 5. 
But, Mike, we should, we should really talk this out. There isn't time. Goodbye, Chris. No, wait a minute, Mike. Mike! Mike! the party? What name, please? Uh, no, the, the party is joining me, thank you. I'll wait at the bar. Madame? A quattro, please. Right away. Your quattro, madame? Is Count Rona here tonight? But certainly. You wish to send him a message? No, no, there's plenty of time. Oh, but he's leaving just behind you now. Hi, Miss Saunders. Thank you for the party. Bye. See you in fact. Good night. Good night. Good night. Package of American cigarettes, please. Please, fine. I'll join you both later. Right. My brandy, please, Felix. Yes, sir. You look different. <laughs> Perhaps it's because we met in the dark. You know, you're very lovely, Miss Kenneth. Thank you. Aren't you taking a chance? You and your friend are both the object of a manhunt. That's just why I'm taking it. Thank you, Felix. What is Blake, by the way? Playing the tables, or hasn't he got your daring? Why do you ask? Are you still interested in the glove? The glove? Believe it or not, no. I agree it's silly to give up so easily, but the whole thing's become, shall I say, too hot. That's why I'm leaving for Paris tonight. Tonight? Discretion sometimes the better part of valor. What about Mike? Mike? What about Mike? Well, you know, he's wanted for something he didn't do. Really? But who's to blame? He didn't have to vote out of Paris. Tell him how badly I feel. If there's anything I can do to help... You could. You could get him out of this. Could I? How? Well, there's really nothing I can think of. You're very charming, Miss Kenneth. Corona. My name's Paul. Paul. Well, is that all you're going to say? Well, what else is there to say? Well, don't you want to know where he is? Oh, it's no concern of mine. Oh, but surely... Oh, well, where is the poor fellow? Is he in a hotel? Well, there's plenty of time. I'll tell you later. Have another brandy. Oh, no, thank you. My train is at half past two. And quite frankly, I've lost interest. This is goodbye. Well, won't you even talk to him? Well, why not? If he'll see me at the station in the next ten minutes... No, no, he, he can't. You have to go to him. You sound as if you want me to go to him. Well, you know why. Oh, why discuss it? I have a train to catch. The train no, will wait, and really, I must... He's on his way to San Elsie to take the glove back. Taking the glove back to San Elsie? <laughs> well, isn't that admirable? But, you know, I couldn't care less. Not with my train and the current police situation. But do give him my regards, Miss Kenneth. Goodbye. Madame, you're not ill, are you? Is Count, is Count Rona really going to take that train? Unless he changes his mind. Changes his mind? How do I find out? You can see for yourself. The train comes in in ten minutes. But, but Count Rona already paid, madame. Of course, madame, in 30 minutes. Oh, that's all right, then. It was all right, madame. Miss Saunders! Miss, uh, 
You remember me, Mrs. John Smith? Oh, yes, yes, of course. My friend, Mr. Perrin. How do you the do? The famous playwright. Oh, I'm going to be in his new show. Well, that's wonderful. Tell me, is Count... Is, is Paul on the train? Paul? How do you know you knew him? Yes, yes we met uh, Café de Paris places. I don't know him well. Well, he's a little bit tired. He's just gone to bed. Excuse me. Uh, I've forgotten my compartment number. I think it's next to Count Rollins. Is Gabby Saunders? That's right. It is next to the Count, number seven. I have been expecting you, madame. Where is Count Rona? He has left the train. He's left? He's gone after Mike? Monsieur Blake has lived too long for our safety. You too. <laughs> And Blake will be ahead of us. The car would warn him of our approach. So you three will walk to the village. And I'll wait here for the count. and the two others have followed the American on foot to the village. Good. Who's there? Who's there? It was something beyond the precipice. On a goat track. A goat? Or a man. Drive up. Park your car outside the village. Go the rest of the way on foot. Warn the others the American may be climbing by the goat track. Tell them to watch for him from the old castle walls. You will follow in your car? No. I'm going to take the goat track. To close the trap.
right. I want to make a deal. I only want the glove.
What a crime, wasn't it, Blake? You want to make that deal? What kind of a deal? The glove first. Bring it out. Come and get it. You want to commit a third murder? Where's Chris? Right now she's on the train to Paris. With Peppy the Crab. I think you're lying. Think what you like. Two of my men will join me in a moment. Here they come. They're going to be outnumbered. And so are you. What do you mean? <laughs> Nobody there. There was nobody there. No one except the dead man. Followed me on the train, found me with Peppy. Oh, Mike, you're all right. Well, there's been another murder up in the tower. Might as well pin that on me, too. But you didn't do it, my friend. All the others. We caught Count Runner's men in the village. One of them has already confessed. Well, the gloves come home. Up in the village, they're saying it's a miracle. It is. But the miracle is that the glove has come home. Not the means by which it came. Well, good luck, both of you. 